Hilton Dresden for Iris Covet Book. Hello. Hi. I'm Hilton Dresden with Iris Covet Book. And you are Hari Naff, the esteemed actress, model, and ravishing red carpet raven. <laughs> That's me! That's you! <laughs> and just for any viewers out there who aren't familiar, Assassination Nation yes. is your feature film debut. Yes. And it's kind of a purge meets Mean Girls type violent social media sort of flick. And it's very good. I was very impressed by you specifically. Thank and you like so much. the crying. And the, the crying. <laughs> um, all, all actresses just want to cry in a close-up for men. Yeah. That's like why we get into the. I mean that's the really. Thing. <laughs> the tears will be great for your real. The real. The real. Thank you for. It's always about the real. It's always it? about the real. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I I hoped the tears when the tears came. I I was. It's just a part of the emotional reality yeah. of the film and. How did you get there, if I might be so bold, to well, crying? Um, the moments where I ended up crying in the film are the moments where I was telling myself as Bex not to cry. The moments where she was trying to hold on oh, okay. and trying to, you know, be okay, trying to hold on to her dignity, but yeah. we all know that we can't be that and do that in every moment of strife we have, so you know, they tell you the best way to cry as an actor is to think about not crying. Oh, that's so interesting, um, actually. And I, I always think it's m more exciting to watch an actor hold on than to let go. Mm -hmm. So I held on for as long as I could in yeah. those scenes. Wow. Well, I, I wanted to kind of start with your initial reaction upon reading the script and seeing this character who is a pretty rare type of role in Hollywood. And what were your thoughts when you first saw that this was a part you might play on screen? Did you were you did you relate to her? Did you feel similar to her? I just thought were she you was excited by it. Yeah, I just thought she was really cool. Yeah. She was the girl I wish I had been in high school. She was so much more sure of herself mm -hmm. and she had this amazing support system of girls around her. That was something I latched down to a lot, this idea that a girl like Bex could exist in this town and in this social environment by leaning on her girlfriends who, in one way or another, might have a slightly easier time than she does or a right. little more access or a little more privilege than her. Obviously it's complex, you know, these, this is a diverse cast with different intersecting identities. But um, I was drawn to her humor, her intelligence, her wit, and particularly the fact that there is no internal conflict with Bex right. about you know who she is and what she's about. What is thrown under the magnifying glass in this film are the way, is the way, her experience and the experiences of her friends are problematized externally. Mm. The insecure, uh, many of the insecurities that I deal with would not exist if I existed in a vacuum. Mm. I'm in, you know. They're imposed upon you. Yeah, like I, you know. Sure. The for, you know, the forces that persecute Bex are the same forces that persecute her friends for whatever reason, and I think that um, we're able to see the universality right. of certain of of these, you know, issues of women being singled out and persecuted and you know these all these expectations foisted on them yeah all different kinds of women we're able to see that all coming from the same place and I think so often we're able you know we we we, we don't want to mix those things and like these women have these problems these women okay. have these problems okay. I think it's sort of yeah. universalizing in a way that you know for a Hollywood film is refreshing yeah it it was really refreshing to see these women who are so sure of themselves. And that leads me into what I also wanted to talk about, which was insecurity. And for you as an actress, aside from the character, this is your feature debut, as I said, but it does seem like you're having a lot of success in Hollywood. And I wonder if that's how you feel. Like, I, this is, I'm just someone who follows you on Instagram and is a fan. 
and it seems like you're doing amazing and I'm so happy, but I wonder if that's how you would tell it. I just feel very lucky to be working. Yeah. And I came into this industry knowing that there were no guarantees and that statistically I probably wouldn't make it. Yeah. Most actors do not. And I, not to name drop, but I took a master class in college, a day long master class with um, the actress Olympia Dukakis. Oh, wow. Academy Award winner. Academy Award winner. And That's her, huge. yeah, and like not to name drop her, but the big thing that she taught us, which is like the main thing I remember from the class, was choose your work carefully. As an actor, do not work just okay. to work. Do not act in things that you think are corny or stupid, even if they pay a lot. Yeah. If you can cut it, if you can like, you know, cobble the money together somewhere else and focus on just choosing projects that you feel passionately about and build that over a longer period of time, your career will be a more successful, slower burn. Mm. And, you know, the fact that I have had, you know, a fashion platform to help me through this transition to Hollywood and yeah. to acting full time, which I am doing now, um, That's I feel I feel really lucky for that. And congratulations, just as a quick interjection. Thank because you. Because this is so exciting. It, it, it listen. It could all end tomorrow. Mm. I'm happy for today. Live I'm today. celebrating this film, and you know, I also have this other thing where. Okay. I do not intend to spend the rest of my professional life waiting around for people to cast me. Okay. I would like to make work for myself and also collaborate on other people's work where I might not necessarily act. Yeah. Um, I've been teaching my, Yeah, I've been teaching myself how to screenwrite and I've never felt more inspired to write than like writing for myself to act. Oh my God. And like and like even if, you know, the thing that I'm working on never gets made, like just having this creative thing that's mine outside of all these auditions where I'm literally just like waiting for people to tell me that I'm good and that I'm okay and that I can play these things. <sighs> it, it it's it's such an unethical way for an artist yeah. to exist. It's like abject. So I need to have my own it's, it's been so healing and so therapeutic to have my own work to come back to. That's great. Even just to have it, to work on it. I wonder, um, you, you mentioned collaborators and you mentioned your own work, and I wonder what kinds of projects are your dream roles and your dream people to work with, even if it's not a role that's happened yet, like if it were something you were to originate, or say it's a Star is Born sort of situation. <laughs> what kind of stuff are the projects you really want? Um, my my nerdier friends and I sort of have this inside joke slash discourse called chaotic femme. <laughs> it's it's like those grid. Things. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all it, it's it's about like the chaos and the horror of being a femme person, mm. being a woman, or being feminine. It is um, quite you know difficult. What drives you know? What are these dark forces that at times seem to impel perfectly normal, perfectly well-off, perfectly okay women to sort of do self-destructive things and act self-destructively? Like Lady Macbeth. Like Lady, exactly. Yeah, that's a dream that's role thing. of mine. She's chaotic femme mm. boots. <laughs> and I, I'm so interested in women who misbehave not just toward other people, but towards themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it, it's like an insolvable Freudian problem. I consistently am trying to wrap my head around, yeah. and I would love to continue to explore the you know darker underbelly of what it means to be a woman through my acting work, because um, it's tough. That's, yeah, it isn't. <laughs> um, and yeah. I'm so excited to see what comes next for you. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, it's really been such a pleasure. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>